Christians all over the world. Lord, we give you all praise. We give you all honor. We give you all glory. We recognize that you are the one true and living God. You are the one who provided your son to give us eternal life. You are the one who has placed your spirit into each and every one of your people all over this world. Lord, we recognize that it's not just us that you have placed your spirit in, but you have people on every continent. You have people in every part of the world. You have people working with every possible condition. And we pray that you would show yourself to be a provider for all of your people all over the world. In places where they are having trouble getting water to drink, food to eat, shelter to protect them from the elements. We pray that you would prove yourself a provider to your people and that you would use your people to reach out to others who are in need, to reach out to those who do not even know you so that they can come to know you. Lord, we lift up those who are in places hot or cold. We lift up those who are in peace and those who are in peril. Lord, we pray that for those who are dealing with opposition, those who are dealing with those who would seek to harm them or to kill them, that you would show yourself to be a protector. We pray that for those who are facing groups who would try to take what you have blessed them with, that you would show that you are upholding your righteous ones no matter where they are, no matter how old or young they are, no matter what country they call home, we know that ultimately they call your kingdom home. So we pray that as all of these people who call on your name, who count on your son's work, who count on your spirit, who are studying and reading and learning your word all over this planet. We pray that you would help us to reach out to one another. You have made us one body. So help us to supply what other parts of the body need for this time. Thank you for your blessings. Thank you for your glory. Lord God, as we continue this prayer, we pray a special blessing upon all of our nation here in the United States, Lord God. We pray for our leaders, those who are having the responsibility over us, from the president to his cabinet, from the state governors, the local governors, mayors, all of those, Lord God, who have responsibility to make the correct decisions, Lord God. We pray a special blessing over them. We ask, Lord God, that those who believe and those who don't believe, we know that you are the God of all. And we know that you can give them the right direction. You can give them the plans that will bless your people, that will bless this nation, that will bless this state, that will bless our cities, Lord God. 
And so that's what we're asking you on today. This has been a crazy week for a lot of people. And we just want to say thank you, Lord God. Thank you, God. We want to say thank you, God. There's so many of us who had to boil our water this week. There's so many of us who did not have electricity throughout the week. There's so many of us who did not have running water all week, Lord God. And we just want to say thank you because you protected us during those nights. You protected us when it was cold. You looked over us, Lord God, and we know it was no one but you. It was not of ourselves. It was nothing we had done. It was not because we worked so hard, but it was your protection, Lord God. When we didn't know what was going to happen through the nights with those cold weathers, Lord God, we know that you protected us, Lord God, and we want to say thank you, Lord God. We pray for our first responders. We, we pray for those who have been working throughout the night. There was plumbers, there were electricians who had to work in harsh conditions and had to drive on icy roads and you protected them, Lord God, when they could have been sliding into a ditch, when they could have slid off the road, Lord God, when we could have slid off the road, you protected us and you allowed us to make it to grocery stores, you allowed us to make it to the gas station and you provided for us when no one else could, when no one else would. Lord God, and we just want to say thank you for that, Lord God. We thank you for your covering. We thank you for your protection. We thank you for those who, again, who left their homes, those first responders, the police officers, the fire department, the nurses, the teachers who have had to work during this time of uncertainty, who have had to work when, when we didn't have all of the answers, who have ran Zoom classes when you didn't know if the students had electricity. And Lord God, you were there, you provided, and we want to say thank you, Lord God. We want to say thank you for your protection. Thank you for being with us. Thank you for leading us. Thank you for guiding us. And we ask that you would continue to cover us as we continue to work through these things. Everything is not over, Lord God. There's still people who don't have. There's still people who are in need. And we ask that you would help us those who have to be a blessing to others. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord. As I pray for our ministry, as I pray for winning souls, Lord, we still thank you, Lord. We thank you for your grace, Lord. We thank you for your mercy, Lord. Even though we have been going through, Lord, you have guided us, Lord. You have helped us in a time of struggle, Lord. We thank you. We thank you for keeping our pastor, Lord. We thank you for touching his body and healing him, Lord, as he go through the things that he go through, Lord. We thank you, Lord. Lord, we thank you for our church mother, Lord. We thank you for protecting her, Lord. Lord, we thank you for all the missionaries and the ministers and the elders, Lord. We thank you, Lord. Lord, we thank you for our state supervisor, Lord. We thank you for our church family, Lord. Lord, we thank you for our church ministry, Lord. Lord, even through this pandemic time, Lord, even through this snowy time, Lord, this wintry time, Lord, our ministry is still pushing forward, Lord. Lord, we are still lifting you up and magnifying your name, Lord. Lord, we thank you for this food pantry that we just started during this pandemic, Lord. We thank you, Lord, because you have given us the power and the will to keep fighting on, to keep pushing on, Lord with your strength, Lord. We thank you, Lord. Lord, I ask that you touch the, not just the people here, but the people that are on their hearts right now, their family members that they are thinking about right now, their friends that they are thinking about right now who are going through tough times, who are going through rough times, who are going through just difficult times, Lord. We ask that you touch each and every single person in here who is praying for somebody right now, Lord. Give them the strength to give them a word to give to those people right now that would lift them up and would bring them out of the darkness, Lord. We thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord, because 
You are who you say you are, Lord. And you said, let everything that have breath praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. We are making a joyful noise right now, Lord, because, Lord, you have kept us, Lord. We thank you for what you have done for us, Lord. We ask that you guide the unsaved people into a church, not just our church, but a church, Lord, so that they can feel the love and comfort that you have provided towards us. In Jesus' name we pray. Thank God. Amen.
Amen. Are we all standing? Father God, as we stand here to break bread, God, I want to wash my hands before I touch your food, asking God that you forgive me for anything that I've done, said, thought wrong out of your will. Asking you, God, to have mercy on us today. For God, we need you. We need your strength, your power. We are nothing without you. As we get ready to break bread, God, we ask you to fertile the ground that it may receive the seed. We're asking you now to bless us this day. Let your words be heard, not my words. Hide me, God, behind the cross. You speak to your people. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen, you may be seated. Amen, first giving honor to God today who is the head of my life. Thanking God for another day that he has blessed and allowed me to see you. Not just me, but us. Because we are here. Amen. Give honor to Bishop Iger Hart in his absence. Thanking him for allowing me to stand in his stead. Give honor to our state supervisor, Mother Yolanda Ford. Amen. Give honor to our church mother in her absence. She's not here. But then I, I have to recognize this last lady, uh, my wife. Amen. Not just for a couple of days, but for 44 years. I tell her sometime, I said, I'll be riding down the road, girl, and I said, I just have to thank God for giving you to me. I said, I have to tell him, Lord, thank you. You knew exactly what I needed. Amen. If you go with me real quickly to the word, going to Isaiah 53, starting around the third verse through the fifth, skipping the sixth, going through the seventh and the eighth, then the twelfth verse. And it reads, he said, who has believed our report? And to whom is the arm of the Lord revealed? For he shall grow up before him as a tender plant and, out, and, and as a root out of the dry ground. He has no form of comeliness. And when we shall see him, there is no beauty that we should desire him. He is despised and rejected of men and a man of sorrow and acquainted with grief. And we have hid as we, as it were our faces from him. He was despised and esteem, and we esteemed him not. Surely he has bore our griefs and carried our sorrow. But yet we did not esteem him stricken, smitten of God and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. And with his stripes, we are healed. He was opposed and he was afflicted. Yet he opened not his mouth. He was brought as a lamb to the slaughter, as a sheep before the shears is dumb. So he opened not his mouth. And he was taken to prison and from judgment. And who shall declare his generations? For he was cut off out of the land of the living. For the transgression of my people he was stricken. Therefore will I divide him a portion with the great and he shall divide the spoil with the strong. Before he has poured out his soul unto death, and he was numbered with the transgressors, and he 
bore the sins of many and made intercessions for the transgressor. Amen. Just for a few minutes, I like to use the thought, he was. It's just simple. He was. Here, uh, Isaiah is a prophet, not just a, a prophet, but a major prophet for God. We have minor prophets and major prophets, but the book tells us that Isaiah was a major prophet. Isaiah start this chapter out by telling us today that, that, that as he told the people in his time about the coming Messiah. In Isaiah asked a question, he said, who has believed our report? Isaiah foretold the world in this chapter about the rejection of the Messiah that many would not believe our report. As we preach and, and spread the gospel, he letting us know that, yeah, there you're going to be preaching, you'll be giving the gospel, but a lot of people is not going to believe the report. In the same verse, Isaiah asked another question. And to whom is the arm of the Lord revealed? In the context of the Messiah's suffering and agony, this line seems, to, seems out of place. The arm of the Lord is the picture of his strength, power, and might. Yet we will see the Messiah weaken and, and, and in suffering but the strength and power and might of God will be expressed in the midst of this suffering. He has no form or commonness, no beauty that we should desire him. Prophetically, Isaiah is giving a more com compelling description of Jesus than any other gospel in the Bible. Jesus was not a man of remarkable beauty as Isaiah describes him or physical attractive, attractiveness. This doesn't mean that Jesus, Jesus was ugly but it does mean that he did not have the average of good look, advantages of good looks. This means that when we try I'm fixing to mess up now. This means that when we try to attract people to Jesus through form of commonness or beauty, let me say it again. This means that when we try to attract people to Jesus through form or beauty, commonness, we are using the method that counters to the nature of Jesus. These days it appears that we must dress up the gospel, make it attractive. We have to use methods or, or, or techniques we must be smart, we well pre uh, presented, streamlined. There must be something about the presentation of the gospel that will appeal to people. Well, I come to tell you, when we do those things, we are diluting the gospel. We are sugarcoating the gospel. I read in the Bible where Jesus said, if I be lifted up, I'll draw all men. Other words, he's saying, you don't have to do all of these things. You don't have to come up with all the special presentation. Just preach the gospel. I wonder if we stop to think that in our efforts to make the gospel message attractive, we are drawing a curtain across the face of Jesus in his humiliation. The only one that can make him attractive is the Holy Spirit. 
God himself, the word of God, is what's going to make Jesus attractive. The word of God is what's going to draw man to Jesus. He said, loving kindness have I drawn you. It's going to take loving kindness to draw the next person. Isaiah prophesies that Jesus, the coming Messiah, Jesus, the coming Savior, Jesus, the one that would carry our sins, would be rejected by mankind. That he came to save. The very people he came to save, the very people that he presented himself to, rejected him. Well, Isaiah is telling us here that he said these things long before Jesus came on the scene. He would be rejected by his own people. Jesus, the doctor, that God the Father will send from heaven with the antidote that will save man from a burning hell. God the Father is sending the antidote, but man will reject the antidote. But if we just preach the word and give the word of God, the antidote will work. We don't have to dilute it. We don't have to dress it up. We don't have to make it look good. We don't have to make it sound good. Just give the word. I remember the old saints when they would get up and they see you going in the wrong direction. They say, if you don't stop, you're going to hell. You don't stop lying, you're going to hell. You don't stop drinking, you're going to hell. Well, that was straightened to the point where we're in this day and time now when you tell people that, now you hurt the feeling. So now we dressing it up trying to figure out how to ease over to, to Brother McIntyre and say, Brother McIntyre, you got to stop. Well, what you mean I got to stop? Come straight to the point. He might not like it. The Bible said the word is like a two-edged sword. It cuts right, it cuts left. You save, it's going to cut you because it's going to find you. The word is going to find you. I don't care where you are. The reason for his suffering would be misunderstood. Most would think that Jesus suffered because of some terrible crime that he committed. Just because you are going through something doesn't mean that you've done something wrong. God said he reigned on the just just as well as the unjust. You're going to have some problems just because you got saved and filled with the Holy Ghost didn't stop the Satan from knocking on your door. And we must remember, Satan cannot knock on your door unless God gives him permission. If you don't believe me, ask Job. When the sons of God appeared before God, they said, Satan also appeared. God didn't ask the sons where they was going, but he asked Satan, said, where are you going? He said, I'm walking up and down. To and fro. Seeking. I'm looking for somebody. I can't find nobody. Guess what? God helped him out. So when something happened to you, don't fall out. Just start talking to God. Say, God, you allowed it. Whatever you allow, I'm going to accept. Because I know that Satan cannot touch me unless you allow it. Nothing could be further from the truth. His suffering, vicarious and redempted, only through the suffering could all the strange sheep could be recovered. Only through Jesus suffering when he's coming. As he's, Isaiah's saying he's coming, and as he's coming, he's going to suffer, but he has to suffer in order to save the sheep. If he had not suffered, where would we be today? The hour and his contraction in these verses is striking and moving. Our experience, grief. His experience, he bore our grief. Our experience, sorrow. His experience, he carried our sorrow. 
Our experience is transgressions. His experience is pierced through for our transgressions. Our expression, iniquities. His expression, crush for our iniquities. Our expression is the peace. He was chastised for our peace. Our expression, heal. He was scorning for our healing. Surely he has borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. He made our griefs his own. And our sorrow is if they were his. If they were his. How many people carrying around pain, grief, and sorrow that Jesus really carried for you? He took them from us. But somehow or another, we took them back. He put them on his back. But some, somehow or another, we end up with them back. But for, for, for it to do us any good, we must release them in the hands of the one that can handle them. A lot of times people commit suicide. Why? Because they cannot handle what they're dealing with. And by his stripes, we are healed. Here the prophet sees through the centuries to know that the Messiah would be beaten with many stripes. More so the prophet announced that the provision for healing is found in the suffering of Jesus by the, his stripes. We are healed. Matthew 8 16 through 17, it says, When the evening was come, they brought unto him many that were sick with devils, and he cast out spirits with his word and healed all that was sick, that it might be fulfilled which was spoken by Isaiah the prophet, saying, himself took our infirmities and bare our sickness. The view seems to be of a physical healing. But in, in 1 Peter 2, 24 and, and 5, who is on self bared our sins in his own body on the tree that we being dead to sin should live unto righteousness by whose stripes you were healed for ye were sheep going astray but, but are now returned unto the shepherd and the bishop of your soul the view seems to be of a spiritual healing. Isaiah is telling us that when he comes, he's bringing both healings. He's bringing a healing for the sick. As you stay here, there's going to be some sick. But he's letting us know that he's bringing healing for the sick. But then he's also telling us that he's bringing healing for your soul. Because when you leave this side of earth, your soul must be healed in order to be with God on the other side. And both our physical and spiritual healing is provided for by the suffering of Jesus Christ. He was pierced for our sin. He was crushed for our sins. He was punished for our sins. He was wounded for our sins. He was in judgment hall for our sin. He was numbered with the transgressors for our sins. But I, I, I like the way verse 5 says it. He said, but he was wounded 
for our transgressions. He was bruised uh -huh, for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. And with his stripes, with his stripes, with his stripes, you are healed. With his stripes, I'm saved. With his stripes, I'm whole. With his stripes, without his stripes, I'm nothing. But Isaiah is telling me, he said, with his stripes, I have a chance to the tree of life. With his stripes, when I leave this side and go to the other side, I have the chance and the right to be with God. Without his stripes, I have nothing. Without his stripes, you have nothing. If you want to be with God, you have to come under the stripes. Isaiah is telling us that he was telling us when he come, he would be wounded for us. He was telling us when he come, he would shed his blood for you and I. Hey Amen. If you don't know the Lord as your personal Lord and Savior, please repeat this prayer after me. Lord Jesus, forgive me for all of my sins. I believe that you died on the cross and was buried. And on the third day, God the Father raised you up from the dead. Right now, Lord Jesus, I open the door to my heart and receive you into my heart as my Lord and Savior. Amen. Jesus is alive.
Let's go.